Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a honest assessment as to my feelings on the Ultimate Box Toppers and the Mythic Edition Planeswalkers. Now, this stuff is not going to uh, end. This is only the beginning. The beginning of... So imagine that you're Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast and you want to make the most money you can in the cheapest and laziest way possible, which would be to reprint cards. Now the Mythic Edition Planeswalkers, they're just reprints. The Master Sets, they are just reprints, but they're very pricey reprints. I've always felt that they should take over the secondary market, uh, Wizards of the Coast, and they have. But in a surprising turn of events, they actually just didn't make things that much cheaper. I can show you the case price. So $14.73 does not include the box toppers. Let me repeat that. Whoever this person is, they already opened all the box toppers. So congrats. It's more around $2,000 a case, $400, $500 a box. And that is very expensive what the product is. And there's actually not that many sellers. So we have a product of reprints, but unlike what I thought they should have done was make the pack $6.99 like the original Modern Masters, they've made them more expensive and the secondary market is still taking advantage of the poor player base. They have every opportunity to make this a cheap product, they chose not to. Now there might be different rationales why they chose the price point the uh, what is it, thirteen ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine, a booster pack, something like that. But my initial understanding is, and here we're looking at the Mythic Edition Planeswalkers, the version one, which is selling on the secondary market for five hundred dollars. Go figure, right? Double the price of what the MSRP that you could have got from the website was. So a certain YouTuber, the Mana Source, has made a killing on this product. Because him and his friends and his family, they all bought two and they don't quote, donated it to charity, which is just the mana source. So it is a obvious investment. It is a obvious, it is super obvious that this product goes up in price. It's not that it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out, yes, that a something that's 250 and limited supply will now be 500 in a few months. So how much money did the mana source make? More money than you probably make a year to make it very simple. So back to why I think this is a bad concept. The game is getting more expensive when it does not need to. And the barrier of entry is getting higher and higher. Um, it's not enough that you have your regular cards. It's not even enough that you can get a regular planeswalker. You have to get the mythic version planeswalker for the most pimp now what many of you will ask no you don't you can this will theoretically make the planeswalkers cheaper more available for everybody but that's not how it works um, in reality when you're pumping out all of these so first of all let me say that a reprint is a lazy design because it takes no work to do a reprint and the artwork, while creative, isn't really all that special. Yes, I know it's unique artwork, but outside of there's no card design, it costs pennies to print this product, and you're selling it for $250. It probably costs, with the overhead divided by all the cards printed, probably less than $5 to make this product. And it's selling for $250 plus shipping. I think that's a very, very uh, interesting way to look at stuff. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I wanna support Magic, um, I'm gonna buy cards, I'm gonna buy packs because I wanna support the creative team, the lore team, all of this stuff. But what you've just told them is you don't actually care about that, do you? You just care about the value because there's no additional lore, there's no additional character development, there's no play testing. I mean, if there is playtesting, it's very, 
it's very limited compared to its standard set. There's no card development. There's no new mechanics. There's no creativity. This is a, the utter most lazy way to make money I can imagine. Okay, so let's talk about this secondary market that is ready to get slaughtered. These cards, once printed enough and printed over and over again, will eventually affect the player base in terms of how much money they have. The player base has a limited amount of money and I would be interested to see what a recession does to it. A recession, at least in America, is coming. I think everyone would say that. It's just a matter, the difference is when is it coming and how hard will it hit. These cards are not recession proof, especially these type. The reserve list, maybe. The reserve list has been tanking recently and the marketplace in general for any item especially a luxury item, is acting a little strange. My concept is, I mean, look at this con. The artwork is absolutely terrible. Like, you couldn't find someone better. To, I mean, look at what he's doing with his hands. I mean, come on. Uh, I, in the comments, someone said that he looked like Wedge, and I think he does. I think Wedge is based on Karn. Or Karn is based on Wedge. I don't know which one came first. This is terrible. Uh, it is incredibly laziness. Uh, it is just a display of disrespect to the player base, in my opinion, to do this over and over again. Let me explain a time before there was uh, Mythics. And the best card that you could play was a rare. So that four card, you needed four of the Blazing Spectre uh, from Invasion for your deck, right? Actually, we had Dark Ritual. Didn't we have Dark Ritual? We did have Dark Ritual. I mean, Katie Mask went into uh, Invasion, I think, right? So we had Dark Ritual into Blaze Inspector. All right, cool. Blaze Inspector never hit above $10. At most, it was $7 because it's a rare. Maybe you get a foil version of it. That's great for you, but it's still not going to be that expensive. Now we go into Planeswalkers and the Mythic Realm. Okay, Mythics. They tend to be better than rares, therefore you need four of those. You need four JSD Mind Sculptors who cracked a hundred dollars, which was unheard of. If JSD Mind Sculptor was just a rare and we didn't have any mythics, it doesn't crack a hundred. Nowhere close. The only reason it cracks a hundred is it's a mythic. And there's less of them. Alright, now we go to the Zendikar Expeditions. Now, I assume this was the masterpiece for a one-time deal, just like original Zendikar with the... You could theoretically open a Black Lotus from a original Zendikar pack. Hidden Treasures is what they called it, so I assume this was something like Hidden Treasures, and it would be a one-time event. Return to Zendikar. Then it was in Over the Gate Watts. I was like, okay, cool. Then many people don't know, but they actually put it in the showdown packs. So not only could you get it in the regular set, you could also get in supplemental sets, which was and still means they can put it down on show. They can put any of these expeditions or masterpieces in a showdown pack. All right, that's fair enough. It was just the block of Zendikar. It wasn't just Zendikar. It was a block of Zendikar. No, it's also the next block. Amaket. Hour of Devastation, and it's the next block, Kaladesh. So oh, you see a pattern here. And then we had these the disaster that was the Mythic Planeswalkers edition. That was, I mean, even they admit it was a disaster. Even they admit that it's a disaster. And we did it again. But we're going to do it on eBay because apparently their e-commerce store, which, think about it, their toy store. They should have e-commerce have figured out a long time ago. How is this a problem? Like, how is this pro a problem? Like, imagine Amazon having a problem like Wizards of the Coast had. It would be an embarrassment. Imagine Walmart having that problem. Imagine any of these large stores that sell toys having this problem where there's just too much demand. And that's a problem. And now we have to put it on eBay. And eBay is going to take a fee from us. And it just looks so unprofessional. When is the last time Amazon, Amazon itself, sold stuff on eBay? Probably never. It would make it not, it wouldn't make any sense. Most retailers are happy when you, instead of buying from Amazon or eBay, 
because they lose that uh, five to 10, depending on a discount percentage points. When you, they go to the Hasbro website and buys from them, then the margins are higher because there's no fee. And you're, you're, taking, you're not taking them off the website uh, for the eBay, which now you are. So imagine a big company like Nike or something, and all these customers really want this shoe. And instead of buying from the Nike website, the Nike put this very special limited shoe on eBay as Nike, not a reseller, as Nike. That would be just unheard of. So my conclusion is Wizard of the Coast is incredibly greedy and they eventually will be punished. Not soon, but eventually. If they continue with these mythic planeswalkers and every planeswalker we know has a mythic edition and now we have mythic, uh, we have box toppers everywhere. Do not listen to them when they said this will be the last master set in a while. We're getting one in 2019. <laughs> I mean, think about what we got in 2018. Well, we have uh, Iconic Masters, then Masters 25, then Ultimate Masters, all in the same year, by the way. They realize this is a piggy bank they can get money from. Why would they stop? Like, what incentive do they have to stop doing this type of stuff? Now, in terms of margins, yes, this product gives them the best margins of any product they have. Selling a booster pack for $4 where you have to design, develop, play test the cards, that costs money. Selling a reprint, a Johnny does not cost any money. You pay the artist minimal wage probably and off you go. So this game is, prepare for this game to get very expensive. This game is not getting cheaper. As long as people are willing to pay and the people are willing to pay because it's this reverse, it's this very interesting uh, phenomenon. The people are willing to pay $250 for a mythic edition because they're getting $500 of value. Just like the people in Modern Masters 1 were willing to pay $699 because they were getting more value. And the ultimate box toppers, the same type of nonsense. Eventually, Wizard of the Coast is going to charge $500 a box for a Mythic Planeswalker edition. Because that's what the marketplace is. Trust me when I say this. Wizard of the Coast is well aware of the resellers. And they will be punished too. So, in conclusion, Magic the Gathering has just gotten just ridiculously expensive. You want a playset of all these uh, new cards, you have to shell out 400, wait, wait, no, 400. 400 is too little. You have to shell out a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars to Wizard of the Coast on eBay. And if you wait, it'll cost two thousand because that's what happened to the original Mythic Edition, Mythic Planeswalker Edition. I am very, very shocked and appalled of what is happening. And this is not a good sign. Uh, normally when a company makes money grabs, it is at the end of their life. And it could be that Wizard of the Coast is expecting the physical card game to die. And they want to focus on MTG Arena, which would make sense. However, it is a sad day when they have to make unabashed money grabs. And this is what it is. Like if you cannot understand what is happening here, let me make it very blunt. They are going after very high margin, very low work items. That does not bode well. They are le letting go people. They're letting go workers. They're letting go creatives. They have 1099 contract. They don't even have these artists as W-2s because they don't want to pay health insurance. They're cheapening out on the creative team. They're cheapening out on what makes magic magic. And instead, they're going hard. They're going hunting for the biggest profits, regardless of what that looks like. I mean, look at these cards. These cards are the chase cards that you want to open in the set. But for $250, you're guaranteed both of these Planeswalkers, six more, and a bunch of packs. So why should you open booster packs? What sense does it make when your premier Planeswalker cards come in a better version, a better looking version, 
and it's guaranteed. If Magic was not pay to win before, it has become pay to win now. And I get the concept. I truly understand what a lot of you are saying that you don't have to buy this product if you can't afford it and you shouldn't buy it if you can't afford it. But when has that stopped someone from wanting a product? Just because you can't afford it doesn't mean you don't want the product. Maybe you don't need it, but you still want it. And if it's a luxury game, if it's a game, then the wants of the player base do matter, not just the needs. Anyway, bye guys.